They've been called the most valuable rocks in the world, with a single gram valued at as much as $5 million. But a great number have simply vanished. What are they, and where could they be? We're talking about moon rocks from the early Apollo astronaut missions, the pinnacle of the space race. You see, landing on the moon wasn't just a giant leap for mankind, it was also an excellent opportunity for some good old fashioned rock hounding. A primary task in each mission was to bring back more and more pieces of the moon to study. All told, they brought back 842 pounds of rock in 2200 samples. Many of these rocks were basalts, which are formed by molten lava. Others were breccias. These were composed of fragments of older rocks, formed by the heat and pressure of meteor impacts. They didn't exactly look like priceless treasures, but what was very important here was that these rocks weren't exposed to the kind of weather and tectonic activity we have on Earth. There was no atmosphere with gaseous oxygen to oxidize their iron content, so they were like a time capsule, a kind of geologic Facebook storing the user data of the universe. Some could be as old as 4.4 billion years and contain particles of solar radiation and cosmic rays. From these, scientists were able to trace the sun's history and the evolution of our solar system. But even better, they could also be used to impress your friends. And that's just what President Richard Nixon did. He handed out moon rocks collected by the Apollo 11 and Apollo 17 missions to 135 nations around the globe, as well as all 50 states. Togo got a moon rock, Malta got a moon rock, everyone got a moon rock. Even big bad USSR got a moon rock. A letter accompanying the rocks explained that, in the deepest sense, our exploration of the moon was truly an international effort. It was the ultimate humble brag. After Nixon spiked the football in the space race, there was a shift in focus at NASA, away from moon landings and towards other forms of exploration. As the years went on, it began to appear that those rocks collected by the Apollo missions may be the last of their kind, and with rarity comes value. By the 1990s, there was a black market of fake moon rocks being peddled to collectors. NASA's fraud investigator Joseph Guthines took out a Moon Rocks Wanted ad in USA Today in order to catch the cons. But he got more than he bargained for when he was contacted by Florida businessman Alan Rosen. Rosen claimed to have an actual Goodwill Moon Rock from an unnamed South American country. Guthines would have just thought it another swindle, but Rosen had so much knowledge of the specimen's history. He knew it came from sample 70017, a 10-centimeter chunk of basalt from which all the Apollo 17 lunar rocks had been chipped. He also had a picture and even a certificate of authenticity from a Harvard geologist. Rosen was thorough. Maybe it was because he wanted $5 million for the tiny moon fragment. There was a rumor that Nicaragua had one that sold for 10 million, so he reasoned this was quite the bargain. Guthines began to suspect that this was the real deal, and he was able to catch Rosen in an elaborate sting. A NASA geologist confirmed the rock's authenticity, while Rosen admitted it was a Goodwill rock from Honduras, where a deposed dictator gave it to an army colonel who then sold it to Rosen. But the US wasn't able to charge Rosen with anything. Since the rock was originally a gift, they couldn't claim rights to it. So, in the beautifully named The United States versus One Lucite Ball Containing Lunar Material and One 10 Inch by 14 Inch Wooden Plaque, they instead sued the specimen itself. By proving that, as a gift to the Honduran people, it could not be owned by a private seller, the US government justified their seizure of the rock and promptly returned it to Honduras. This satisfying resolution to the case left Guthines wondering how many other Goodwill lunar rocks had slipped into private hands or were otherwise unaccounted for. The answer turned out to be quite a few. In fact, Guthines found that hundreds of these rocks were missing. Styling himself the moon rock hunter and aided by his own criminology class students, he set out to track down these little gray treasures. Maybe because no one had ever put a precise dollar figure on the rocks, or maybe because they didn't exactly look like priceless artifacts, many of the rocks vanished due to lack of oversight. Malta's rock was heisted from a museum with no custodians and no surveillance cameras. After a fire in a Dublin observatory, Ireland's rock was buried in the Finglas landfill, a tiny pot of gold beneath tons of trash. 
The Dutch Rijksmuseum had its rock tested only to discover that, through a mix-up, what they had was actually a piece of petrified wood. Oh! Other rocks have been found in the homes of various public officials or buried, forgotten, in storage vaults. Gut Heinz and his students have tracked down 78 so far, through a combination of extensive public records checks, working the phones, and just plain old dogged tenacity. Is it the same kind of dogged tenacity that once led man to reach for the stars? Well, probably not. But it is something you can do from the comfort of your sofa. So, what are you waiting for? There are still well over 100 rocks still unaccounted for, including those from Spain, Afghanistan, and Romania. Where would you start? Let us know down in the comments, and while you're down there, like, subscribe, and ring that bell. You don't want to miss out on any future episodes. Thanks for watching.